We're out here at Oshkosh, Osh 25 as we're calling it. Uh, you've seen this guy, we did an interview online and talked in depth and length about Gradia Aero, BD Aviation, Sure Wings, and MW Fly doing all those things. But here in the flesh, boots on the ground, Attila. Hello. We're going to talk um, about the airframe, all the things, all the things. So uh, really, really quickly, let's start with what the, um, the Sure Wings part of your business is. Sure. Uh, sure Wings part is a complete aircraft kit with a build assist. It's the fastest way somebody can get in the air and still comply with the 51% rule. And it uses the BD-4C airframe right here. And, hold, hold for cut. And we equip it with a preset uh, list of equipment. The only choices are really color of the aircraft, the interior color, and now we have an engine option. You can order with the Viking 195 horse turbo engine or the 210 or the 240 horse MW Fly engine out of Italy. So lots of lots of options here. Correct. It starts, it starts with this frame. So I want to kind of skip around the other side of the camera here and walk around this frame and, and talk about some of the advantages of the construction methods they use on the BD aircraft which Sure Wings assembles. So let's get into the construction methods of the, the BD 4C. Okay, so what you're seeing here is something that you can put together in one weekend essentially. All the kits are CNC cut and pre-drilled. When you put it together, everything just lines up. So the first step is to Clico it together, which is why we have this kit here. Once that's done, you remove your Clicos, you upsize drill, countersink, and put a bolt in there. When you're done with that process, you take it apart, get it allodyne, it gives it that gold sheen, and then it's put back together. At that point, you want to do the paint and primer and put the skins on, and then put everything else into it. What you have at that point is a, an airframe that's perfectly corrosion treated. The, it's bolted together with lock nuts. There's no shaking like you have in rivets. There's no entry points for any corrosion to begin. It's pretty much locked for life, and it's corrosion treated for life. So you don't have to worry about the airframe. Of course, you have the massive tubular spar that Jim Beatty is known for. And it, the thing is massive. The wings, the spars slide over this like a socket. They're actually even bigger than this one. The aircraft can handle plus or minus nine G's at 2,000 pounds and six G's at 2,400 pounds, which is our max takeoff weight. So this is the unique method as far as the, uh, the fuselage and airframe. Now the wings are a little bit unique as well. Correct. Uh, in the 4B version, we had the fiberglass wings, which were buckets that would slide on, uh, that could be built fairly quickly. This one is using a wet wing, the 4C, uh, and the skins are bonded on honeycomb ribs. So there's no rivets, and it makes for a very smooth surface. And once they're bonded, they're bonded for life when done properly. So again, you are offering through Gradia Aero and these different uh, businesses you have, uh, this is straight from BD as far as the kits, and you can still order the kit through you, but then you also have the builder assist. What's the major difference of construction time if you were to build the kit on your own versus a builder assist program? So if you build a kit on your own, you're looking at about 700 hours. That's, that's what's estimated. And if you were to go with the Sherwings method, it's about two weeks to comply with the 51% rule. That's the fastest way to get in the air. But builders have built these things in record time just because of the construction method. Once you get the hang of it and you know how to put the skins on, it goes pretty fast. So Attila, let's talk about some of the power plant options you've got with this, this platform's airframe. Okay, so in addition to the Viking 195 horse, we have the MW Fly engines. The engines the ones we would recommend are the 210 or the 240 horse for the BD-4 airframe. But this engine comes in about 24 different versions, 100 horse to 240 horse. And you can get it with a direct drive or a gear drive, turbo or naturally aspirated left or right rotating. They can be used for pusher or puller configurations. Uh, it's designed to be completely redundant. So redundant ECUs, redundant ignition, dual spark plugs, redundant injection, and dual fuel pumps. Also, you can get an MW Fly 
hub and blades for a complete prop solution, constant speed, hydraulically controlled, and they have their own uh, prop governor. So additionally, you can also get the MW Fly engine monitoring module, or it can talk CAN bus to any EFIS or multifunction display, or you can do both. You can have the, the, the engine monitoring glass inside and still send the information to the panels. So you've got firewall forwards set up for the Viking option, the MW Fly, any other engines can hang on the front of this airframe? Under the Sherwings program, these are the only two options. However, you can build a BD-4 with pretty much any engine you want as long as it's appropriate. Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com, offering everything from state-of-the-art glass cockpit options to advanced control modules that power and control your entire aircraft. Gradia Aero Group at GradiaAero.com, proudly representing these best-in-class brands for experimental general aviation. Sherwings, BD Aviation, and MW Fly. KFA, Kit Planes for Africa, engineered for adventure and build for the bush is their motto. Offering several stole kit aircraft options like the Expedition, Safari, Bush Baby, and Explorer. Find them online at kitplanesforafrica.co.za. Bravo Fox at bravo-fox.com, the U.S. distributor for black shape aircraft providing sales, maintenance, spare parts, and repair services, located at the Sheridan Airport in Indiana. Stewart Systems, manufacturer of non-hazardous waterborne products for covering and painting aircraft. Offering in-depth workshops teaching you how to DIY fabric and paint. Find them online at stewartsystems.aero. Visit us online at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for all things DIY aviation. And consider supporting us on our Patreon page to help us bring you more original aviation content. Okay, so we talked a little bit about the, the fuselage and the, the method of uh, assembly, uh, some of the engine options. Let's go back to the Sherwings and what that looks like as far as your builder assists and kind of maybe lay out the groundwork of if I were to arrive, what would be done already and what would I have to do? Well, we try to set it up to where it's about four trips of three or four days each. It's about two weeks in order to do the sufficient amount of work, but you'd be involved in the initial assembly of the airframe part of the wing, control surfaces, etc. Even in the interior, the engine mounting, avionics. We want to make sure that the, the builder is exposed to all of that. And of course, we have to stop at different times because people aren't always available when we're at the next stage. Okay, and would you have to bring any tools along with you or you're fully uh, prepared for the uh, assembly though? No, no tools are required. It, everything's there. You just bring yourself. Just bring yourself and a willing yeah. attitude to put your own aircraft together. That's it. Be ready to swing a wrench and get your hands a little dirty. Okay. And uh, through that, that process, when you're all done, obviously you have to do um, some flight testing. Do you handle that? Do you work with the, uh, the owner to do it or uh, as it in, in conjunction with? There are a few options there. If the builder wants to make arrangements and we can assist with that at a local airport they can make that their test flight home airport and they can go through the phase one program there or they could trailer the aircraft or we could ship it to them uh, to the home airport they want to use if wherever it's closer to them alternatively we can handle the phase one testing and do the you know fly the hours and actually go through the line items that should be checked in a phase one. So pretty flexible there. Okay, uh, let's go back to the BD-4 uh, model itself. Give us some of the, uh, the performance numbers. If this is a big aircraft, it's a wide aircraft, it can carry a lot of weight, but what are the specifics of it? Um, equipped with the Viking engine, it's going to have over 200 mile an hour cruise, 180 knots, climb would be about 1500. Um, you, back takeoff is 2,400 pounds. Useful load comes in right around 1,050. Because we added the parachute and the air conditioning, that's 95 pounds right there. So we're down to 1,050 useful. Standard uh, fuel is 50 gallons, but you can carry up to 80 with the optional extended tank, which doesn't hang down. It's just a bigger wet wing uh, tank. With 
with 50 gallons of fuel, you have about 750 pounds left for passengers and baggage. How are you want to divide it up? About 350 pound limit in the back seat. All right, you got it all darked out in there so you can see the instruments. We'll zoom in on that for just a second, but uh, you're also showcasing it is about 90 degrees outside here, but inside the cockpit, you're probably in the in the high 70s. This thing is air conditioned. Correct. It's nice and cool in here. It's 78 degrees <laughs> with the door open. And that's going to be an option, but more or less a standard um, a selection, I think, from your customers. Uh, the air conditioning is included in the standard kit it, now. Okay. And we've also added a, a LiDAR altimeter, okay. which is also standard. So we mentioned how wide this thing is. How, in inches, how wide is the cockpit? It is 46 inches technically, but when you put in any amount of door panel, other than just wrapping against the back of the skin, it ends up being 45 inches edge to edge. Okay. Which leaves, which translates into a, a really wide instrument panel, and you can really fill it up to whatever you need there. Yeah, and we've pretty much filled it up already. This is our demonstrator model, and it does differ a little bit than the production kits. So some of the things are not the same, such as we have done away with the rocker switches on the production kits and the push-in breakers, simply because we ran out of real estate, uh, and we didn't want to double up on them just because there's no room in the back. So now everything's going to be a switched breaker like it is on these 11 switches here. And that'll give us a lot more space. Also, the rocker switches are susceptible to inadvertent deactivation with your knees. The stick won't do it because it has a stop position, but it's safer. We change the battery switches to locking switches. So there's no way to unintentionally uh, turn them on or off. It has to be a very deliberate act to turn them both on or off. It's push to start with a guard. Um, the key is a two position, just off or on. And then you can just hit the engine start button and it's all automatic. You have your master switch here, avionics master. And we have a separate DC bus for the network, which is both Starlink and cellular, auto switching. So when you roll it in the hangar, in most cases you'll lose the Starlink connection, the cellular will kick in. And you can always leave it on because the ground power has a transformer that feeds the power for the network through an automatic transfer switch, allowing it to have two DC sources. So when it's in the hangar, uh, you can still communicate with a management node that we have inside the aircraft. You can monitor your temperature, humidity, and put a, you know, if you want to put a camera inside your hangar so you can monitor the aircraft. Uh, the internet connection is there, so you might as well use it. Other than that, let's see, we have our oxygen system. It's a four-place, uh, plumbed to the rear seats. We have our comms here. Fuel switch is left, right, and off. There is no both. Uh, we've got comms for the rear passengers in the center console. You can't see it here, but there's an AC outlet, three amps, so you could plug in a notebook or something that needs AC power in flight. Our heads-up displays here, it is connected to the GRT avionics panels and in, it has its own processor and logic so when you're shooting an approach it'll actually show you your anticipated touchdown point and it'll let you know if you're going to be left or right of, right of center line if you're too high or too low. We're running the GRT avionics horizon 10 inch dual, they're both master and we have a tablet here Normally in flight, you would be running it in split screen mode. We include with it 10 years of flight, FlyQ EFB and 10 years of IFR updates. You'd be running in split screen mode with FlyQ on the left, or you can run for flight if you want with the level aviation app on the right with the virtual six pack. In the background, you'll have a virtual co-pilot application running, running you through your checklist so that you don't forget anything. This uh, is about as fully loaded as fully loaded comes. Pretty much. Uh, the autopilot's built into the GRT, and we have an infrared camera that can see through the night sky and a little bit of weather as well. The LiDAR is accurate, starts at 500 feet, calling out your altitude all the way down within five foot increments below 50. Um, we have our air conditioning airbags for the pilot positions right here and uh, four-point harness for uh, the rear seat passengers. A couple other things in the production kits. We, 
We have different cup holders and door handles. Um, the way everything is designed, you have a palm rest on the control grip. Then you've got an elbow rest on the center console, elbow rest on the door handle, and the production seats will have, instead of the headrest being concave, they'll be convex to give you proper support behind your neck. So in normal flight, all the pressure points are supported to keep you as fresh as possible for the most critical phase of flight, your approach and landing. So Attila, you're gonna have several of these flying probably by uh, next year and gone through your Builder Assist program. How can they get in touch with you to find out when to schedule this and get you on the calendar? So best way is to go to our website and the phone number for all the companies is listed on the top right hand corner. Websites are gratia.aero, A-E-R-O, surewings.com and bdaviation.com. And for the engines, it's mwflyamericas.com. Give us a call, we love talking to our customers. Quick shout out to our patrons over on Patreon and our co-pilot status, Zach Newsom, Mike Babcock, Lynn Gardner, Gary Martin, Michael Smith. Thanks for watching this episode of the Experimental Aircraft Channel. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you don't miss a single episode. See you in the next one.